Well, Foundry Church, uh, I'm Eric. I'm one of the pastors here at the Foundry, and I'm just excited to dive into the Word of God with you. We'll start in John chapter 9, verses 1 to 4. It says this, As he went along, he saw a man blind, born, born blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. And then Romans chapter 8, verses 18 to 28 say this. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pain of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who are the first fruits of the Spirit, we groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. We hope for what they already, who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our, weak, in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but... The Spirit himself intercedes for us through the wordless groans, and he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things, God works together for good, all things for those who love him and are called according to his purposes. And then today's devotion, day three in week six. I have often read this account of the blind man that Jesus healed and thought about how amazing that moment was for him. But I don't think I ever really thought about his life before the miracle. I never thought about his parents and the heartache they had. Did he cry out to God along with his family for healing? Did his parents pray for healing every day? In Jesus' day, the blind usually became beggars just to provide for themselves. Did he plead with God for a miracle so that he wouldn't have to beg in the streets? Did he wonder where God was and why God didn't answer his prayers? Did he lose hope? Did his parents lose hope? I would imagine his journey and his parents' journey was difficult. Who could have guessed that this man was born blind so that God's glory could be revealed in him through Jesus? We will all face suffering in this life as human beings. And we need to cry out, and we will cry out for deliverance from the burdens that we bear, just as we should. But do we have the faith to trust in the middle of the trial, when our prayers are not answered, when and how we expect it? When we don't get the miracle we ask for, this, this is where we find out what we truly believe in. In the days ahead, I invite you to pray over these things listed below. Really wrestle with what Jesus uh, wrestle with Jesus to understand what it means to be used by God to reveal his glory. In the middle of this trial, the, the trials that we are living in even now, hold on to the truth of Romans 8, 28, that God works all things together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purposes. And here's a good question. Well, I trust that God is good, even when life is difficult. Friends, thank you for taking some time and being with us in devotions. Bless you as you go about your day.